You're listening to the Grow Landscapers podcast. The podcast where we delve deeper into landscape business, interviewing legends of the UK landscaping industry. So, join host Nick Ruddle as he explores their thoughts, insights and experiences. That's here on the Grow Landscapers podcast. Hi and welcome to the Grow Landscapers podcast. I'm Nick Ruddle and today we're lucky enough to have Steve Wally from London Stone on the show. How are you doing today, Steve? Yes, really well. Thanks, Nick. Thank you so much for having, having me on today. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure. And what a success story you are in the landscape industry. And it seems to me like everyone in the landscape industry seems to uh, use your products, <laughs> whether that's true or not. Who knows? But it just seems that everyone that does know you and uses your wonderful products. So uh, anyway, thanks for accepting our invitation um, because your story should be a huge inspiration to everyone. And personally, I'm really looking forward to hearing all about it too. So uh, let's jump straight in, shall we? Okay. Okay. So um, how long have you been in the industry then? So I've been involved for about 25 years. Um, I first started off when I was about 19 or 20. I'd, I'd finished university. And to be honest, I hadn't done too well at university. So I was, um, I was kicking around a bit. And I started to do odd jobs in my local, local neighbourhood. Um, and what I found was that most people were asking for jobs related to landscaping. Uh, I didn't have any skills at the time, so I sort of got through that summer, and then I thought, you know what, there's, there's a market here for this. So I got a job employed as a landscaper. And we started off doing uh, uh, turfing on building sites. And you know, it, was quite a, it was quite a sort of you know, rushed work, mm. uh, quite sort of rough and ready, but it was a good, you know, it was a good learning curve. Um, and after about probably six months of that, we were in the canteen one day at lunch, and all the all the guys were talking about uh, a local competitor who ha- had some jobs jobs going. Uh, so I just didn't say a word. I kept my mouth shut. And that uh, that evening, I finished work and went down to this sort of other company and applied for the job. And I got the job. Um, I don't know how, but I got the job somehow. And um, that was that was much more fun, and we were doing you know design and build, so that was really interesting. We were, you know we we're building some really nice you know quality gardens, and you know I learned I learned a lot there. I learned about paving, about fencing, about decking, mm. all these different uh, skills, and you know I really enjoyed it. Uh, so I actually I actually in the end I got sacked from that job. Uh, <laughs> Because I was, I have to admit, I was a bit unreliable at the time. Right. Um, that's a, that's sort of age, I suppose. Yeah, but, yeah. But <laughs> I think, in hindsight, that was the best thing that ever happened to me mm. because it really made me sort of you know, wake up and mm. think about, you know, um, what I wanted to do. Uh, and actually, about three or four months ago, I saw the guy who, uh, who sat me. Uh, his name was John Melling. Mm. And I saw him in the high street of my town. And I went over and had a really good chat. And I actually said to him, I said, thank you. I thanked him for, you know, what he'd done for me. And I actually thanked him for sacking me as well, because for me, that was a, you know, that was a wake-up call. Mm. Um, and from there, I then went and got a uh, Prince's Trust loan for about £3,000. Um, I, I bought a small van, some tools, and I started my first uh, landscape business. Mm. Wow. That's where it all started. It does tend to start that way, doesn't it? Man in a van and out you go and off you. Yeah, you yeah, it was, uh, it was fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, so when was that? How long ago was that though? And then we'll come on um, to when you started London Stone. That would have been, that would have been early, early sort of 2000. Okay. And uh, I did that business for a couple of years. Yeah. And then some friends of mine were going uh, travelling around, um, around the world to, you know, Southeast Asia, Australia, India, and all these sort of places. So, I thought, you know what, if I don't go now on this trip, I'll probably never get the chance to go again. So I sold uh, the business, my, my business partner, and I went to Australia for a year. And that was great. That was great fun. I had a great time. Did quite a bit of work over there, there as well, actually, landscaping. Mm. Uh, and then when I came back, I started the business again, uh, this time with my brother and a close friend of mine. Um, and after about, say, 12 months, we were looking for ways to try and, uh, and diversify uh, the business. And we came upon the idea of importing sandstone. 
So we were quite at the time, we were, I was probably 27 at the time. So no real commitments. Um, you know, I didn't have a mortgage or a family or you know, anything like that. So we could sort of take a risk, really. Yeah. So we scraped together about uh, £60,000, wow. uh, which at the time was, you know, an awful amount, a lot of money at the time. You know, it was, it was everything that we had. We, we begged, we stole, we borrowed. Mm. You know, we just got everything we could. Um, and we got a kitty and money together. And me and my brother, Gav, we flew over to India and we ordered, I think it was 10 containers of mixed sandstone. Wow. Uh, and then we came back and we started, uh, we started selling it. And that was, uh, that was the beginning of London Stone. Brilliant. So what year was that then? So that would have been 2007. Right. 2007. So 15 years ago, um, as it's yeah, yeah. today. Very good. So you come a long, a long way in that time. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> yeah. so, so, so when it started, it literally from, from nothing, you just had your, your brother, I suppose, uh, a phone. And um, wh- wh- how did you, how did you get, how did you get all this, um, the, the sales in? What did you do to, to sort of spread the word and get out there? Um, I think in the, in the early days, it was, um, it was mainly yellow pages. So yeah. we just go on the yellow pages and we just ring around local landscapers yeah. uh, and garden designers. And we just spread the word that way, really. Um, it was really tough for the first, first two or three years. Uh, really tough, actually. We, we were literally living from week to week. Really? Um, we, we had no idea about running a business, a supply business. And, you know, it was, it was really a case of learning on your feet. Yeah, yeah, trial and error. It was tough. It was, you know, it was long hours, working seven days a week. It was, it was really hard. Yeah. Isn't it funny when, I suppose, people see you now as a well-established, really successful business, all these different wonderful products and services you offer, and they don't realise that, you know, what, what, what led you to, to that point and, and the, the ups and downs, the trials and tribulations that you go through. But it's the same, I think, for any business, isn't it? A lot of the, the, the guests we've had on here um, all had a hard time. You know, it's never been easy. You know, there's ups and downs, you know, good, good times and bad times. And, and the early days are, are pretty tough. And some of the days in between can be tough as well, can't they? But, you know, you've, you, you've come through that. Yeah, I mean, someone, someone told me very, very early days, it was really good advice. Um, he said to me, he said, he said, don't be too impatient. He said, it'll take you between three and five years to establish yourself. Uh, and he was, you know, he was, he was right. He was absolutely right. Mm. And it, it did take about, about that time just to get to a point where, you know, we were paying the bills properly and we were, you know, we were taking a wage ourselves. Yeah. So, you know, those first three years were, were really difficult, but we sort of, we, 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 we knew about that. We knew about that. We're ready for that. Yeah, it's funny when when you're going through it, it seems like forever, doesn't it? It just seems like, oh, is it ever going to happen? Weeks and months go by. It's like wading through treacle. But then, three, four years later, you look back and think, blimey, look how far we've come. But at the time, it just seems like it's slow, doesn't it? Yeah, but it does. You don't want to rush it. You want nice, steady, sustainable growth as well because you don't want to go be really successful because you haven't got the systems and the foundations in place either. Yeah, of course. Um, I think uh, I think in those. In those first what, three, four, or five years, it was literally just a case of, you know, as well as trying to actually keep your head above water, you were trying to develop the skills as well, yeah. know, and learn and learn the skills and get the experience you needed to, to go forward. So you know, it was it was just a massive learning curve, and we, we made we made so many mistakes. I think in those early, early days, yeah. Uh, but we, we somehow we're somehow still here. Yeah. And at, at the time, day. it did feel really, really slow at the time. Yeah. It but does. It's also you know it's gone so quickly as well. Yeah, when you look back, it's really fast, isn't it? But at the time, it's slow. It's yeah. Like a, um, you fail your way to success. So um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you haven't failed your way, you're never going to do anything, are you? So, so the early days then um, was just you, your brother, and who is it? Yeah, so we, we, had, we had a business partner in the early days. His name was, uh, name was Ben West. Right. Uh, ben, ben left the business quite early, and he went on to establish a company called Landscaping Solutions, Right. Who are, uh, you know, a really successful uh, design and build landscaping company. Uh, they, they've won a lot of Barley Awards. And I think in the past in the past few years, Ben's really become well known for you know building you know, eco-friendly gardens. Mm. So he's uh, Ben's done really well, I think. Yeah, very good. So, so 
what does it look like now? Who's in the business now? And and what what are your offices? How many showrooms? And you know how many employees? What what, what would you say? Where 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 are you now? What is so, your... uh, yeah, at the moment we've got um, we've got six showrooms, and we've got two more showrooms opening this year. Wow! Uh, so there's one in Eastleigh on the south coast coming soon, and there's also one in Bristol as well. Wow. We've got um, uh, a distribution centre near Heathrow, which is about three at a three and a half acre site. And we've just opened a four acre site in Orsham, South Manchester. So that's our, our northern distribution hub. And we've also got a, um, a production facility, uh, again, near to Heathrow. So we've got about 100, 140 employees, a uh, big team of people, um, a board of directors. And you know, we've built something that we're really proud of. Yeah, and so you should be. It's phenomenal, isn't it? 140 employees, all those different sites, and still growing. Still yeah, growing. yeah, no, it's, uh, it's it's good fun, I have to say. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. God, it's, it's so much people can can learn from you if they're listening to this now. So, um, what would you say then? Um, what are the most important elements from all your experiences, failing your, your way to success, and all those kind of things? What would you say the most important elements are, are there are to running a, a successful business? Um, I think it depends, you know, what your ambitions are, really. Uh, I think, you know, people, people run businesses for, for different reasons. And I think um, in our case, we, I think from day one, it was always about, you know, building a big business, you know, building a brand. Um, and I think in that case, you know, to, to, to do that, we had to work really hard and, you know, make a lot of sacrifices. Mm. Um, so I think, you know, hard work is something you've got to be very prepared for. Um, and I think also, you know, the very best businesses will run themselves when you're not there. So I think um, it's really important that you create, you know, really in-depth procedures and processes for, you know, for all the businesses' tasks and operations. And, you know, it's effectively like a manual for how to run your business. I think that is when it really stands up on its own two feet. And there's also a commercial value to that as well. Uh, I think if you want to get, you know, sustained growth and success, you need that system, and that structure in place. So I think that's very important. Amazing. I think that's a, such a good answer um, and not one that many people necessarily would would say straight away. But um, our definition of action coach of a successful business is a commercial profitable enterprise that worked without you, the business owner, if that's what you want. Not everyone wants that, but, but yeah. as if you're going to sell it or as if you're going to um, duplicate or as if you're going to franchise it. And, and you know, then you've got the option. And like you say, you're adding the asset value of the business then and you're not part of that equation. You know, so you, it, it can operate and run and still grow without you having to be there. So you own a true business. You don't own a job. A lot of people Absolutely. have a business, yeah. but, but they also have a role. They have an employee at whatever level within their business as well. So I think it's a really important point to make. Okay, so 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 processes and systems and procedures are important to you, then having that how-to manual. So people, when they come and work for you, how do you how do you introduce them to, to, to those kind of processes? Um, we've actually got a really uh, a really good uh, training system in place. Yeah. So we've got something called the London Stone Academy. Okay. Uh, and that's run, run by one of our, our sales leaders. And literally, it's, it's like a boot camp. Brilliant. So they'll, they'll come into, into work and they'll just be trained you know, really in-depth, uh, you know, really detailed on-the-job training. And that takes usually about three or four weeks. Wow. And after that period, you know, the person is ready to you know, go out there and work, work in the business. Uh, one thing we also do as well, which I think has made a big difference for us, is... We send our salespeople to the Landscape Academy for uh, practical training. So that's um, run by Mark, Mark Yard up mm. in Cheshire. Yeah, yeah, and no. I think giving, giving our sales staff a you know, real hands-on experience of the products it makes a really, really big difference for them and for the customers too. Yeah, yeah. Phenomenal. Uh, when you said um, that you, it works without you and that that was an important thing, I, I knew there must be some kind of training good like structured training program that you do like with your academy that you mentioned there um because it's getting them to do things the london stone way not just absolutely bringing it in old, old habits or different ways of working um and to have three or four weeks where you just focus them on you know inducting them for that amount of time i think 
you, that you've got to have the procedures and the written documentations or the videos or whatever that training material is it needs to be in place doesn't it, it needs to be followed before like you said you un unleash them on in, into <laughs> into their job <laughs> yeah i think and, you know very fortunately for us uh, michael forks uh, who's our one of our sales leaders he, he just loves training he's really passionate about training mm. uh, he's very uh, he's very organized you know, he goes into so much detail that, um, you know, it's we're lucky to have him. Yeah. You know, we've got, yeah. got a great team in place. Brilliant. Brilliant. Very good. Very good. There's a lot of people going to learn a hell of a lot, I think, from, from that particular point there and putting the right systems in place first because you can't train people on it if you don't have them written down and, and that how-to manual because there'll be nothing there. Of course. There. <laughs> of course. So, uh, There's always important. something they can refer back to as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this is what systemology is with over that side of the systemology is a method is the system for systemizing a business and it's probably i'm sure there'll be um some similarities in the way that you've done things there as well oh, so um, you probably get on quite well with michael <laughs> i'll send him a book i'll send him a copy <laughs> of systemology it's um it's yeah. a revolutionary way anyway um so what would you say the biggest uh i don't know whether they call them mistakes or, or failures or or what would be the, the biggest challenges that you've overcome or whatever word you want to insert there um, through your time in business? What are those big, big issues? Um, I mean, I think in terms of, in terms of mistakes, obviously, you know, how, how long have you got? Uh, the list is, is endless. <laughs> you just, you, you try and not make the same mistake, you know, more than twice. Really. Yeah, that's, as long as you learn from the mistake, I think. Yeah, that's exactly. The point, isn't but it? I think the best advice I could give really is, uh, you know, never compromise you know, on health and safety, I think. Um, you know, luckily, nobody's ever been you know, seriously injured at London Stone. Uh, but when you're dealing with, you know, plants and heavy goods like stone, mm. the potential for disaster is, you know, is real. So, you know, never cut corners or compromise with your safety because, you know, it's just not, it's just not, not worth it. Mm. Um, and I think secondly, you know, you've got to control your costs. And you've got to get value for money with every single penny that you spend. Um, you know, even when times are good, mm. if you run your business like it's on a war footing at all times, then, you know, you'll really benefit. Um, you know, you'll really benefit. And you know, that doesn't mean that you're close to the opportunities, mm. but it means, you know, you've always got to be ready to take risks. And as long as you do it carefully and, you know, protect the downside. Um, I think looking back maybe about five or six years ago, I think one of the biggest challenges that we faced was, you know, as the business was growing really quickly, was trying to sort of maintain that sort of service mm. and maintain that ethos. Uh, because you know, you've got a lot of people in your company and, you know, many of these guys, you don't have, you know, direct contact with them anymore as the business grows. Yeah. So that can be a problem. I think, you know, it comes down to, you know, employing the right people, you know, and taking the time to employ and train the right people. I think in the past, we've, we've fallen into the trap of just, you know, we need, we need to meet a person, yeah. bring someone in, you know, anyone in. Yeah. And it, it doesn't work. No, and I think a lot of people I think do that, haven't they? A lot our, our sort of out now is that I would rather wait for six months to find the right person than yeah. just bring someone in to, to fill a gap. Um, you know, get, get the right person first time around and the business will be, you know, the business will be in much better shape yeah. as a result of that. Yeah, the ethos really is it's recruit slow, hire fast. So you, you take your time to recruit slow, but when you snap them up, when you find them, you snap them up quick because they the best. Yeah, I mean, if you, if you see someone good, yeah. then, you know, get them in. And likewise, you know, retaining stuff. You know, if you've got good people, you want to keep them there for a long time. Of course. Because yeah. they get better each year as they get more experienced. Yeah. You know, so you've got to build a team. Yeah, keep training, keep investing in them and, and yeah. make sure that you give them no reason to leave. You know, with, yeah. with recruitment, you know, it, uh, the analogy I use, it's like, <clears throat> let's say you're, you want to go and catch that really rare fish. You've got to be really lucky when you chuck your bait into the into the river, but that fish is going to be there when you want it to be there. You know, so yeah. you think, oh, right, we need to get, I don't know, production manager or something. Uh, you, you, you've got to be patient. You can't You can't just take the best of a bad bunch within the first two weeks of advertising. But when that when that person does come along, you know, don't muck around. Let's um, you know, you, you sort of snap them up straight away. Yeah, I'm really glad that you've used the fishing analogy. 
Uh, I'm, I'm a key fisherman, so me and, me and my team are using that quite regularly. The old yeah. fish analogy. So yeah, it's, it's a good one. It's true though, isn't it? Because as a yeah. fisherman, you've got to be very patient, haven't you? You might just sit there absolutely. all week. Yeah, <laughs> that absolutely. one fish, that one fish, yeah. but that one fish, you know, will be with you for a lifetime, kind of thing. The, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, as long as you look after them and keep keep um, making it a, you know a great place to work. Okay, good. So um, so any other major setbacks or, or or in particular obstacles that you've faced um, that you've had and, and maybe if you have faced them, what did you do about it and what was the outcome? Um, do you know what? Actually, a really a really important phase in the business was back in two thousand seventeen. Yeah. So we we grown quite quickly and then we we grown every year you know, really grown then. In 2017, we had a flat year. And it was a real, it was a real shock for us because we were used to growth every year. Mm. And, you know, we, you know, we opened the bonnet up, you know, we, we took a look at things. Yeah. And we realised that we'd become a little bit expensive in our prices. Um, you know, at the time, we were very much based around you know, London in the southeast. Um, I think... As we try to sort of grow, you know, grow out further, we realise that the price was becoming an issue. I think, you know, like like many businesses, we found this trap of, you know, thinking that every year we could put a price up by three or four percent, mm. um, and it, you know, it, it's quite a lazy way to do things, and it, you know, it breeds complacency. And when we had this flat year, it, it was a real shock. It made us you know, look at the whole business and actually realise that, you know. You know, us putting our price up every year, you know, wasn't wasn't the right thing to do, and you know, could we actually find savings, you know, in our business and be more efficient yeah. and try and try and hold the prices? So that really set us off on a journey. And uh, my business partner Gav, he came across something called Lean, um, uh, which is basically a manufacturing technique that, that came from Japan originally. Yeah. And over the past sort of five years, Gav's implemented you know a lean strategy across the whole business mm. and you know it's really changed things for us it's transformed you know our outlook i think from that moment for the following three years we froze our prices so what that meant was that as our competitors were doing the same thing as putting their price up every, every year mm. our prices stay the same and all of a sudden within, within two or three years our prices became very competitive. So we went from being a company that was perceived as being expensive to a company that was actually you know, really affordable and offered, offered good value. Uh, at the same time, it's still you know, maintaining the service, the quality, and all those things. So that for us, that, that was the springboard to you know, some quite big growth. Yeah. Um, I think until obviously the recent inflation from COVID, you know, we've kept our prices really stable. Mm. Uh, so I think for us that was a, a defining moment for our, for our business mm. uh, and we're constantly now looking at ways to, you know, to save money to make things more efficient just so we can keep our prices low and you know look after our customers yeah it's funny you say that you know just putting your three or four percent on a year it's lazy it's, it's funny interesting you say lazy because you know, you can do more, can't you? And you, in by by digging deep into the business, looking at all those little tiny ways to, to make those little efficiency changes. You know, those law of marginal gains add up yeah. to, to nice big gains. You know, um, yeah. I mean, I mean, literally, I mean, as for example, we've got you know, we've got bridge shores in the factory, we've got production lines. Just moving one saw twenty yeah. feet, it can, it can make a massive difference. Yeah, I yeah. think um, you know, I think the advice I'd, I'd give to any any sort of business really is you know, look at your business and look at your process and you know, identify ways to improve things yeah. and you know, strip out waste. Yeah. You'll, you'll be amazed at how much you can find. Yeah. And it's continual as well, isn't it? It's ongoing. You're always, always trying to, you know, analyze and, and test and measure your, the way you do things and the process. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Very good. I like that. Um, and I think in the current climate you've got to do that and i think this current current climate does force people to do this a lot more like earlier you said yeah when it's when it's good still still run your business as, as if it's really tight and i think you should always always do that and check in and see how can we um, make things more efficient how can we you know just just improve your margins whether you renegotiate with your suppliers or whether you 
um, find little ways um, of, of improving just just certain things every day or every week that maybe your team are doing or, or not doing and all those things do add up um, and yeah if you can keep the, the, the pricing competitive then it's good for the customer it's good for you everyone's happy and you, you're making money as well well, that's the thing. It's it's win win. Everybody wins. Yeah, it's got to be. Yeah, it's it's, it's a mindset. Be. It's a mindset to get yourself into. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we we've got suppliers who who still do it every year. They put the price up by three or four percent. Yeah. We started saying no in the end. Yeah. We started saying no. We won't accept this in the end. Right. <laughs> you know, go and do what we've done. Yeah. Yeah. We'll teach uh, you. We'll come and charge you how to do it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, you basically the, the business. You basically expecting your customers to pay for your your laziness effectively. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what you're asking them to do. That's effectively what it is, isn't it? It's bizarre. Yeah, it's a funny, good way of looking at it. So, what parts of being in business have you personally found the, to be the most rewarding? Uh, I think to be honest, it's working with my family. So, I work uh, really close with, with three of my brothers. Yeah. No. Um, so, you've got that, that trust. You've got that, you know that, that shared, that shared sort of mission, that shared that shared vision. Yeah. And for me, that's probably the most the most rewarding thing. But you know, also I've made some I made some amazing friends along the way. You know, you meet so many people, you know, employees, customers, suppliers, mm. and I think some of these people become really close friends. So I think just access to so many people is just is just great. And that's for me, that's probably been the most the most rewarding thing. That's nice. That's nice. And it's nice that you you're still speaking to each other as brothers and you haven't beaten each other up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, well, you know, we, we have our moments, but I think you can have, you can have you can say you can say what you think. Yeah, and then it's, it's done. Then it's forgotten. Have a little fight. Yeah, there's been a couple over the years. <laughs> there it is. Well, I know that I've got an older brother, and uh, yeah, it was a daily occurrence for us. But with uh, well, you've got three brothers, three other brothers. Isn't it? Yeah, there's, I mean, there's, there's three of us in the company, but I think we've all got our own our own different areas now. Uh, now, obviously, we help each other out and we support each other. But you know, I do the sort of the marketing and the business development. My brother Gav does the operations and the production. Right. And Duncan does the finance and procurement, so Good it works really well. Yeah, 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 brilliant. Got clear roles and responsibilities. Yeah, absolutely. Very good, very good. Okay, cool. Um, what advice would you give to someone who's maybe a little bit stuck at the moment in their business and wants to expand, but don't quite know what those next steps are to take? Um, I think. Okay, so over the years, I've known a lot of people who have tried to expand yeah. landscape and businesses. And they've gone from two teams to three, four, five teams, you know, in a short space of time. Mm. And I think you've got to do it really carefully because it can become, you know, it can become a poison chalice. And, you know, I know, I know a lot of people who've they've gone, they've gone to five teams and they were making the same money as if they worked with two teams. And they then come back down again to two teams because they, they just become, you know, busy fools. Why so you, I think. Why do you think that? Yeah, well, I think you've got to do it carefully. You've got to have really good people around you, mm -hmm. and as I said before, you've got to have you know processes, processes, procedures, so that you know you can you can really sort of measure what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you just expand quickly, then you lose control of your costs. You yeah. control the quality, and yeah. you end up running around like a you know like a blue horse fly, just trying to sort of keep everybody happy. And you, like, as I say, you become a busy fool. Mm. Uh, so I think it's uh, it's not a good way to run a business. You end up micromanaging people. So I think it's really important to you know do it in a careful way, in a stage way, and you've got to have good people, you know, really good people that you can trust and you can, you can do the job right as well. Yeah, uh, and I think if you look at the uh, you know, the business has done this successfully. You know, people like Landfall and people like Bowles and Wire and Alpha Room, these big, well known companies, they've been, they've been around for a long time. Mm. You know, I think they would tell you before anybody else that they've been through down, you know, ups and downs. But, yeah. you know, it takes time. You can't get there overnight. You've got to be patient. And you've got to, you know, you know, walk before you can run, I think. Yeah, it's funny. Those two people you mentioned have, have been on this show already and have said exactly that. And, and it goes back to what you said at the beginning there, um, right at the beginning of, of, of the show, which was, um, you know, you were impatient. You, you wanted to do it quick. And, and that brilliant bit of advice you got was, 
you know, the chap said to you, three, yeah. five years, you know, it's going to take you three to five years. Don't, don't be tempted to try and grow too fast. And that's, that's the same yeah. kind of advice we're giving now, which yeah. Uh, yeah. is obviously valid. Very good. Wise words. So, um, okay, finally then, we've just got one, one last question to go and I shall let you uh, go on your merry way. Um, if you had one golden nugget, just one, um, if there was anyone, you know, trying to build their business from all your years of experience, you've probably mentioned quite a few things over the last half an hour or so already, but if there was just one golden nugget, that you could leave with, leave us with, what would it be? Uh, I haven't got one. I'll give you a few if that's okay. Go on then. More <laughs> than they're all, they're all important. They're all important. Yeah. So the, the first thing is that, you know, don't cut corners. It always comes back to bite you. You know, that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is procedures and processes, you know, and, you know, detailed procedures, not just, you know, vague ones. Yeah. Map it out properly. Every little detail, you know, about, about every job. It's really important. Um, be lean, you know, don't waste your money or resources, you know, control your costs. And I think the most important advice I would give is uh, now it sounds a bit cheesy, but uh, the most important thing is to care about what you do, you know, care about your staff, you know, care about your customers, care about the quality of your work and your reputation, you know, really care about the small details. I think if, if you're conscientious and you commit to doing things properly mm. and you know. And you care about people along the way, I think you'll be successful. I yeah. think you'll, you'll enjoy it as well. Absolutely. But I think to really, really, be, really caring about what you do, I think is the, is the most important thing. Yeah, that's not cheesy at all. I think that's so good because, you know, genuinely, you want to do a great job. You don't want to cut corners. You want to do, give the best value for money because you care about doing a good job and giving people a great end result and whole wonderful experience. So, absolutely. I think. Um, you know, if, if they know that you really genuinely care and they, they trust you as well, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. And you'll get referrals and everyone's a winner and everyone will. Yeah. Very good, very good. Wow. Um, I think that's about it, uh, Steve. I think we've pretty much run out of time. Um, your words of wisdom have been phenomenal. And yeah. um, if, if, if people would like to get in touch with you or if they want to, um, I don't know, come and buy loads of wonderful products off of you um, or speak to you personally, what's, what's the best way that they can get in touch with you? Uh, email probably. So it's, uh, it's Stephen. S T E V E N at londonstone.co.uk. Nice and easy, nice simple one there. Well, brilliant, Steve. It's been an absolute pleasure. It's been really interesting, and um, what a great journey you've you're on, and still continue to go on. And um, I think there's even bigger and better things to come by the sounds of it. Yeah, I hope so. Thank you for having me today, Nick. I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, it's an absolute pleasure. It's been brilliant, and um, I'll catch up with you soon, no doubt, another time. Okay, thanks very much. Cheers, Steve. Take care. Bye. Cheers, bye. Thanks for listening to the Grow Landscapers podcast. To get in touch and see how we can help you with your business by emailing nick at nickruddle.com.